one thing I would like to say that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and that light is not dim, that light is bright. Now only thing is how we make use of that bright light to find our way when we come out of the tunnel is not only up to us but up to our government as well. Because I tell you, India can be the next world manufacturing hub. The way Europeans, Americans, Japanese, they are planning to shift their base from China to other countries. India can be the next destination for all these countries. And when they come to India to set up their base, there will be a chain of ancillary units and MSME can play a very big role to set up the ancillary units for these companies. It will be a game changer for India. You know, tide can be turned in our favor, but here the role of our government is a, it plays a very major uh, contribution. Because if they come out with incentives, plan, compliances reduction, or things on the platter for these countries, India can be the hub for all these countries. Japan has already earmarked $2.5 billion to wind up their shop from China and ship to other countries. Now, Vietnam, Thailand, they are waiting for these countries to come and set up their shops in their country. India can play a very big role and especially MSME can be benefited a lot. So, government has to come forward and give incentives, make plan and policies and invite these big masters from the Europe and American and Japanese countries. So this is what I want to say. Yeah, I think at the uh, at a company level, uh, I feel uh, waiting for the government to set out a broader policy, uh, uh, you know, those initiatives, these things take time. Uh, just before I started this, I was heading the industrial practice at Frost and & Sullivan and we did a detailed report for the Indian Electronics and Semiconductor Association. For the last five years, uh, they've been talking about policy initiatives, moving uh, a lot of business from China, etc. Et now, these are, uh, these are macro things that take time to really specify. In my view, for an SME to start looking at uh, how can they be a good import substitute for their customers, reach out to the export markets. The simple uh, process is first to identify which are the markets uh, that are attractive enough for your line of products, your category of products. Uh, the step to do that is, is a simple desk research exercise uh, can actually tell you what is the kind of, I mean, uh, for example, if I take Europe, uh, what are the products under your line that they are importing from various countries? What are the type and specifications at a very broad level of each of these products? Uh, a very quick desk research can give you some indication of the volumes, uh, the size of the business, and uh, you know how they're doing it, etc. Step two is to really look for a few distributors and start you know, initiating conversations with these distributors and talking about your capabilities. I'm aware of companies in Pune and a few other areas which have proactively done that and are today uh, 60 to 70 percent of their throughput is actually catering to uh, the needs of Europe and many other countries uh, in terms of contract manufacturing and they have forged tie-ups in the last three four years very very actively so in my view I wouldn't wait for the government to do anything it'll have it'll chart its own course given the constraints given the uh, uh, various challenges that the governments have to face uh, in, in evolving this so Proactively, I would start identifying countries uh, which which are importing a lot of products uh, in, which are which are relevant to me uh, or, or the ones that I have capabilities in, and and start looking at how do I how do I identify three four distributors uh, in in various countries. Let me give you an example. Uh, though not an SME, uh, in fact, the Wipro consumer business, a big chunk of their business is actually uh, you know types that they forged. Uh, in about 30, 40 countries, and uh, a lot of consumer products that they make uh, have been through tie-ups, and then they've gone on to acquire companies, and uh, you know expand their uh, portfolio and uh, reach out to international markets. And the 
and the step was initially doing about 50 100 crore business and today they are selling and doing about 3 4000 crore business uh, in many of these markets so and and they have a business development team uh, whose job is to just hunt for new markets they say they identify a market like south africa and they say let's explore how much consumer products uh, uh, the south africa import from various sources which are these sources what type of products and then they funnel it down to three or four or five distributors uh, who are master distributors in this and start having conversations with them and and do some pilot trials with these guys and it has gone on to open up huge opportunities for a company like this i am not saying it will it is uh, 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 very expensive to do these things this has to be done through some smart desk research talking and opening up some channels of communication with these people exploring a few trials and then going on to having longer term commercial arrangements let me tell you europe and us will be under tremendous pressure because a lot of stimulus and packages will go to retrieve the situation so for businesses it's going to be imperative for them to start exploring new markets bringing down their cost structure and india has a big big role to play i see a lot of reluctance with smes uh, uh, to actually uh, explore some of these markets uh, well i could i mean we could we could move this conversation offline and i'll be happy to take this ahead and and engage with companies on you know how exactly to do this we are we are supporting a few companies uh, which are looking at markets like spain italy germany and many of these markets that was a good input actually uh, uh, see uh, i just wanted to know how to start and make action so uh, it's a very valid point that we do some of the test first based on product like and try to find out uh, uh, the markets uh, in the uh, western side and also uh, find distributors for those uh, product lines Uh, we should be prepared. We the the opportunities which are going to come as an alternative to uh, alternative to China are definitely going to be there. But I would rather say all the medium, large corporates and uh, even the small uh, industries to gear up and be open and you know be ready. You know, like when we say uh, the business to be ready to accept the business and grow. So that thinking part, if it has the opportunity is seen, I think we should start preparing for it. If it have not prepared, it will go away. okay so uh, uh, we don't want to be like the last option to open up the this thing we should be maybe in the first four uh, top three or four options that okay uh, not china india and india is ready uh, at the moment we are just looking at the opportunity but uh, we may not be actually ready so we can be ready with the first is the thought process and the other things are uh, getting the systems in place where people can talk to you communicate to you uh, and be ready to you know uh, you know on that front of opening up the alternative side to china So three things I want to mention to you, which I think are important. Just like your survival and my survival is at stake, your client's survival is also at stake. So don't take stupid decisions that to basically get market share or get your customers' business at ridiculously low prices. I think these are times to be mindful of the fact that just because you find a client who's willing to buy your product, it doesn't mean that you'll end up not getting stuck with a huge amount of receivables at a later date. because i think one thing that people often forget in a crisis is you're in a crisis your client is also gripped by by a crisis keep that in mind the second point i want to make in the context of banks a couple of questions came up in the context of banks there is a difference in the behavior of public sector banks and private sector banks public sector banks have been cooperative private sector banks apart from hcfc bank have not generally been helpful beyond a certain point and i've actually found that this might be a worthwhile strategy to follow if you're a viable borrower and you don't have any default record of any kind it may not be a bad idea to think whether you want to tell the customer the bank that if he pushes you a bit too far you will go to nclt i'm not saying you need to go to nclt i'm basically saying it's a trump card you can play you can play it only once uh, but if you don't go to nclt of course you lose your credibility but i think threatening the banker that you know he will lose what he has is sometimes not a bad idea it's like when you play a game of uh, a game of cards i think you need to figure out when to play your trump card so i think offering to threatening to go to nclt is never a bad idea the last point i want to make now i can't speak about it too much because we are actually working on it the government is now looking at the gst data to try and channel business to companies which have 
unutilized capacity. This study is now being done for six different states in the country, including Maharashtra. The, therefore, from your GST filings, combined with your filings with the local MIDs here, wherever, one will actually get a sense as to what your install capacity is and what your production is, and how much of those products are being consumed within the state. That, so when people were talking about how will you get information about customers, there is now this study that's happening, initiated by the MSME ministry with these six state governments. The state governments are Maharashtra, Punjab, UP, Chhattisgarh, and one more in Bengal, I think. That's where it's going to start. It's going to be expanded to the whole country, where data will be made available to MSMEs on where potential demand exists for their unutilized capacities. I think it's a very welcome thing. The study will be done in the next three months' time, by which time you will actually have solid intelligence courtesy the government of India.